Good morning. It is Monday, the 27th of December, uh, the third day of Christmas in the year 2021, uh, the feast of St. John the Evangelist and Apostle, uh, the beloved disciple, uh, the patron of this parish. Um, we're here at the Rectory of St. John's Church in Savannah for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book with a few bits of 1662. We're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life. To the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers, to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long as I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Alleluia. Unto us a child is born. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Well, let us indeed hear his voice, uh, the Creator and Savior who has uh, been made flesh and dwells among us full of grace and truth. Uh, the Psalms for this Feast of St. John the Evangelist, uh, uh, Psalms 19 on page 363 and 27 
on uh, 371 and then 34, uh, and that is on uh, page 380. So uh, thematically chosen psalm, Psalm 19 is indeed a psalm of, of course, a revelation, um, the revelation of God's glory in the natural order of his, uh, of his glory in the word, uh, and then uh, uh, the uh, going forth of, of, uh, of both of the sun visibly and the word intelligibly are images of the going forth of God's eternal word uh, uh, incarnate and proclaimed indeed by the gospel of St. John. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. One day telleth another, and one night certifieth another. There's neither speech nor language, but their voices are heard among them. Their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words into the ends of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which cometh forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a giant to run his course. It goeth forth from the uttermost part of the heaven, and runneth about unto the end of it again, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The law of the Lord is an undefiled law converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and giveth wisdom unto the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and giveth light unto the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endureth for ever. The judgments of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant taught, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can tell how oft he offendeth? O cleanse thou me from my secret faults. Keep thy servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get the dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent from the great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We need pray that the light of that word may fill us and purify us inwardly. Psalm 27 also picks up this uh, image of light, one of the favorite images of John's um, writings uh, in, in the gospel and epistle and revelation, and here uh, an expression of, of confident uh, reliance in God as light and salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom then shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host of men were laid against me, yet shall not my heart be afraid. And though there rose up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I desired of the Lord, which I will require, even that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord and to visit his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his tabernacle. Yea, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me up upon a rock of stone. And now shall he lift up mine head, above mine enemies, round about me. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and speak praises unto me, thee, unto the Lord. Hearken unto my voice, O Lord, when I cry unto thee. Have mercy upon me, and hear me. My heart hath talked of thee. Seek ye my face. Thy face, Lord, will I seek. O hide not thou thy face from me, nor cast thy servant away in displeasure. Thou hast been my succor. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. My father and my mother forsake me. The Lord taketh me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in the right way because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over into will of mine adversaries, for there are false witnesses risen up against me, and such as speak wrong. I should utterly have fainted, but that I believe verily to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. O tarry thou the Lord's leisure, be strong, and he shall comfort thine heart, and put thou thy trust in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, 
world without end. Amen. There's a, a, a joy and a longing for intimate communion with the Lord in that psalm, uh, which uh, uh, brings, makes us think very much of uh, John, the, the disciple whom Jesus loved, the disciple with whom he'd had a, a cl especially close friendship and who uh, was, uh, as the expression said, leaned on his bosom at the Last Supper. Psalm 34, uh, page 380, uh, a psalm, of course, of, of the saints um, and of the uh, great favor um, uh, that those who trust in God um, experience. I will always give thanks unto the Lord. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O praise the Lord with me, and let us magnify his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. Yea, he delivered me out of all my fear. They had an eye unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Lo, the poor crieth, and the Lord heareth him. Yea, and saveth him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord tarrieth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste and see how gracious the Lord is. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O fear the Lord, ye that are his saints. For they that fear him lack nothing. The lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who seek the Lord shall want no manner of thing that is good. So there's the, the great blessings uh, that the faithful, the, the, who, those who fear God, uh, experience. And now uh, the psalmist, um, we can hear John himself saying uh, 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 instruction in the fear of God. Come, ye children, and hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is he that lusteth to live? I would fain see good days. Keep thy tongue from evil, and thy lips they speak no guile. Eschew evil and do good. Seek peace and ensue it. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. The countenance of the Lord is against them that do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth them, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a contrite heart, and will save such as be of an humble spirit. Great are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of all. He keepeth all his bones, so that not one of them is broken. But misfortune shall slay the ungodly, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord delivereth the souls of his servants, and all they that put their trust in him shall not be destitute. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Christmas time, we remember St. John, of course, is the great witness of God's glory. We behold his glory, he says, right, St. John, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, but, of course, there was a foreshadowing of this vision of glory, and that's uh, the vision that was granted uh, to Moses in response to his prayer. And uh, so here beginneth the ninth verse of the 33rd chapter of the second book of Moses called Exodus. It came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door. And all the people rose up and worshipped every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. So the presence of God is in the tab tabernacles, dwells, it's the same word in Greek, uh, among his people. Moses has special, intimate fellowship with God in the tabernacle. This continues, verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And the Lord said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, Moses said unto him, If thy presence go not 
with us, and that's, I think, properly how it should be translated here, carry us not up hence. He wants something. Moses is interceding for his whole people. He wants God's presence with the whole people. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. Uh, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing, also which thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. So Moses has obtained the assurance of God's presence with his people as they go through the wilderness, um, a, 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 a foreshadowing, of course, of, of Christ's presence uh, incarnate. But now Moses goes one step further, verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. And the Lord said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by, and I will take away mine hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And the Lord said unto Moses, Hew thee two tables of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon these tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai, and present thyself there to me at the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount, neither let the flocks nor herds feed before that mount. And he hewed two tables of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning, and went up unto Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, and took in his hand the two tables of stone. And the Lord descended in the cloud, and stood with him there, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him, just as he'd promised Moses, and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children, unto the third and to the fourth generation. And Moses made haste, and bowed his head toward the earth, and worshipped. Here endeth the first lesson. So, uh, wonderful foreshadowing of, indeed, the themes uh, of John's uh, writings, God's indwelling presence of the revelation of his glory, uh, the glory which is nothing else, of course, than both his grace and his truth. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee, all angels, cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim, continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, Thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints, in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine heritage. Govern them, and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee. And we worship thy name ever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, 
as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the 21st verse, the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Uh, and this passage at the Last Supper, uh, part of the extensive discourses that uh, John recorded in his Gospel, and brings out uh, especially the very intimate uh, friendship that John had with Jesus in the exchange which takes place in the beginning of this discourse. When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, which is to say, it's an expression for the person who's at the place of favor on the right hand of Jesus, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is, to whom I shall give a sop, and I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. Therefore when he was gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself, and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, Whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say to you, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Here endeth the first, second lesson. Well, St. John is a great witness to the truth. Uh, he's also a great apostle of charity. And uh, on St. John's Day, uh, the old custom was to celebrate that charity in, uh, the, uh, uh, in the sharing of a loving cup. Uh, lovely custom, now long defunct, but reminds us of those practical expressions of uh, warm fellowship and friendship um, to one and all, uh, which is so much part of our Christmas rejoicing. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, but thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. What we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts and confess with our lips as we recite the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one baptism, one Lord, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for uh, all sorts and conditions of men, that God's ways may be known unto them, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, for its unity in the truth of the gospel and in brotherly love, for its mission and ministry in every place. I bid your prayers for our country, this country of ours, and all countries, for their peace, order, and good government, and for the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression, um, for the peoples of Myanmar, of China, of Shenzhen, of Hong Kong, Tibet, and North Korea, and peoples of Iran and Afghanistan, of Syria and Lebanon, of Yemen and Ethiopia, uh, in the Sahel and West Africa, uh, in Belarus, in Ukraine, um, in Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua, Haiti. I bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, for the, their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity, of service and prayer, for their steadfastness under persecution and harassment. Especially we think of the Christians of India, who are being uh, persecuted by uh, Hindu nationalists and uh, not protected by the civil authorities. Bid your prayers for those who suffer in mind, body, or state, that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Bid your prayers especially at this Christmas time uh, for those who are uh, alone and unloved, for the hungry and the homeless, the orphaned, the abandoned and abused, for those who suffer from depression and mental illness, for those who are grieving. Uh, for those um, who are recovering from uh, surgery or undergoing it, dealing with cancer and its therapies, who suffer um, chronic pain, a debilitating infirmity, cognitive impairment, those facing the challenge of sobriety, the caregivers, uh, those who care for the sick in mind and body, the healing arts and sciences. We think especially of the um, uh, healthcare uh, professionals facing the possibility of another surge of uh, cases, um, uh, COVID infection uh, likely to overwhelm intensive care wards and emergency rooms. Uh, for those who are dying and for newborns and their mothers. We remember before God those who departed this life in the faith of Christ and are at rest in him, especially Drew Toxler of this parish, died last week and will be buried from St. John's on Thursday at 2 o'clock. And this day, that being under the divine protection, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, being sanctified by his Holy Spirit, transformed into the likeness of his Son, uh, that we may be found in him when he comes again in glory. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state 
and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. Merciful Lord, we beseech thee to cast thy bright beams of light upon thy church, that it being illumined by the doctrine of the blessed apostle and evangelist St. John, may so walk in the light of thy truth, that it may at length attain unto life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us thy only begotten Son, to take our nature upon him, and as at this time to be born of a pure virgin, grant that we being regenerate, and made thy children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by thy Holy Spirit. Through the same our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace and grant you your prayers according to his most holy will.